Hey, what's up? This is episode 27 of the Throwaway Days podcast. I'm Cody Jones. This is my podcast. Um, what's up? What are you What are you doing? What are you wearing? What do you smell like right now? It's been a while. I haven't done... Uh, this is my first podcast in October, I think. I've been slacking. The last one was Moody Black, if you check that out. Thanks. If you didn't, fuck you. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't care what you do. So I'm recording in a different direction in my room right now. Normally I just do it right next to my uh, writing desk, but iLive came over and he was just telling me I need to record into my closet towards my shirts so they so the sound doesn't bounce all over the room. So now I feel like a weirdo because I'm the type of dude that I wear a shirt and then I'll hang it back up if it's not super dirty. So I'm like looking at all these shirts, trying to remember which ones are dirty and which ones are actually clean. So I don't know. That's what I'm doing right now. That's what's up with me. Yeah, I haven't done any podcasts though because I keep thinking I'm going to reformat the podcast. Instead of doing like one long interview with someone, I want to do, if you ever caught the first podcast I did, it was a mix of snippets from interviews, um, kind of stories from me, and just a bunch of music. And I kind of want to go back to that. I like that a lot, but it's a lot more work. So... That's why I did it this way, because it's a little bit easier. But this time we have on Kurta. Kurta is a rapper from Denver. Sometimes Kurta's a band, but uh, I think it's mostly just one dude, Kurta. Jake, I think was his real name. But I probably shouldn't tell you that, because rappers don't like getting their real names out there. But um, yeah, it was the first time I met him. He actually toured through Philadelphia on the same night Kid Dead was touring through but they weren't able to play the same show. So instead of having one cool indie underground weirdo rap show, there was two, which is cool too. I made it to both of them because I fucking bike all over the city. Um, My show with Kid Dead was a little bit earlier with Kid Dead, Torito, and E Grizzly. And then I biked across town to Lava Space and I caught Curtis set, a little bit of Curly Castro and Primrock. So it was cool. you know, small indie rap world. Most of these artists all know each other, but for some reason weren't able to figure it out this time. I don't know. Weird, weird shit. That shit happens all the time. But um, yeah, I did get a minute to catch up with Kurta. We hung out that night a little bit, ate some Indian food, and it was nice to like kind of not just rush somewhere immediately and be like, all right, you ready for the interview? Like um, we didn't do an interview until the next day, morning, whatever. So it was kind of like a little less awkward than whenever I'm just meeting someone for the first time and you can kind of just like feel a tension in the interview. I feel like that wasn't really there in this one. But uh, the interview was cool. Um, Kurt is a smart dude. I know a lot of rappers say that. They're like, yeah, I'm actually, you know, I'm book smart too. It's like, yeah, whatever, fuck you. But he's actually a a smart, educated dude and I'm not. But, you know, that's fine because I pretty much just hit record and I sit and listen to a lot of these things. But um, it was interesting to hear his perspective on, like, um, on work, you know? He, he, like, went from having a job for several years to just getting rid of that job so he could focus more on music. And now he's just, like, a stagehand, which is, like, a freelance thing. Like, you pick up gigs when you can. Yeah, I think it was just so he had more time to focus on his music because that's what he wants to do. And it's just interesting. We talked about that a little bit. Something I thought was like the most interesting was he just like reaffirmed that like when someone's like a real artist, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm going to try and be an artist. But if this doesn't work out, I'll, I'll get a job at the bank. It's like, no, like that's not how my mind works. It's not like this or that. It's art. And I just, everything else seems silly, you know, like working a job and shit like that. I don't know. It was cool. It was a good talk. And uh, he's definitely like more committed to his art now because I think a quote in the interview was like, you don't get anywhere without being all in. And you really don't. If you're like working a job part time and then you're coming home like, yeah, I got my nine to five, but then five to nine, I'm really hustling on my art. It's it's not going to work. You know, nine times out of ten. You know, I'm not trying to crush anyone's dreams here. Who the fuck am I to tell you how to live? You get yours, I'm not doing anything. But, um, I don't know. It was was a cool conversation. I enjoyed talking to him. Um, even if, even if he was smarter than me. (laughs) Motherfucker, you know? I gotta, I gotta interview some dumb people. 
Everyone's in here just talking over my head about shit I don't understand. I'm gonna have like Oscar the Grouch on here next week, just talking about eating trash. That's something I get down with. But yeah, this is the interview for Curta. Thanks for checking it out. If you're new um, and you like indie rap stuff, I got interviews with like Moody Black, Spoken Nerd, Raymond Strife, Big Breakfast, um, Carl Kevorkian, just a whole bunch of people. You can go back and check all those out. And hopefully before long, I'll have my podcast reformatted so I can fit even more indie rappers into one podcast. But yeah, um, without too much further, what's up with me? Um, Internet skateboard's still doing that thing. I'm about to go to Spain so I can skate Barcelona, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any shows coming up. If you uh, want to buy an internet skateboard and they don't have them at any of your shops, you can go to the Big Cartel. You can you can figure out the, the URL. I know you can. Um, if you're into the podcast, let me know. A little encouragement goes a long way because I get easily discouraged and I'm like, man, this is whack. But uh, you can follow on social media. It's TTAD Press, I think, on most of them, the throwaway days, stuff like that. And here's the interview with Curta, and we're going to play a track by him at the end of it. All right. Thanks. Peace. Yeah. You're Curta. We pretty much talked about everything. I should have just like got all those conversations, man. Oh yeah, we should. We should have just done it last night. Yeah, I was tired. Yeah, me too. Um. But yeah, let me let me think here. So I'm in like a weird transition phase with the podcast where I'm deciding. Like at first, I'm like I'm not gonna research anything about them, cause like I'll just let it unfold in the podcast. Yeah. But then now I'm like trying to like shorten the interviews and shit. But I didn't interview you. Make it more dense or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to be comfortable. It's hard to like find that balance of a comfortable conversation and like a meaningful one. Yeah. But we'll find it. (laughs) (laughs) Is it is it tracking right now? Yeah. Oh word. Yeah. Hi. Just do whatever. Hi. I eat some strawberries. Um, yeah, you're Curta. You're in Philadelphia right now. You played last night at Lava Space. You're on tour from Denver. Hell yeah. Which you're pretty much from. You're from outside of Denver, right? Yeah, I mean, I live in Denver actually. I but, mean, like, uh, you I grew up, up outside of Denver. Yeah. yeah. Uh, until I was 18, and then I moved to the little mountain town, and then I moved back to the city after like four years of going to school up there. Yeah. What'd you go to school for? Uh, English and political science. Okay. <laughs> well, I technically went to get a writing degree. Yeah. And then I thought, I was like a junior in college, and I was like, this is fucked. I'm not learning anything about the world, and that was really interesting to me at the time. Um, and so I got into this political, I really liked this one political science professor, and I basically just took a minor in his courses. But in order to do that, I had to forego the writing degree, which by that time I had realized was kind of a moot point to get a writing degree. It seemed more important to me to just spend time writing yeah. and reading. Which I got a lot of good stuff out of the program, but so the English degree kind of... I ended up doing more critical academic courses than I maybe would have liked to, but I got a lot out of those yeah. also. And I, yeah. and I feel like, I just feel like writing something I would be better off doing on my own. And education at that point seemed to me, and still seems to me, like a luxury in my life. Yeah. Like if I realize like I'm not going to do... I'm not going to be an English teacher like all yeah, these other people like, around me. So it just became a luxury, and I was like, well, I'm just going to try to learn as much as I can about what the fuck is going on in the world with my last, like, year and a half here, and I just did a political science minor. And yeah, that seems smart. It seems, like, weird a lot of times to go to school for different mediums of art. Yeah. So, like, I, I respect people that get something out of it. Work, but, or learn. Yeah. I know, I know people that have gotten a lot out of, like, getting an art degree or studying you know, painting or maybe, uh, my friend did audio engineering and I know that he learned stuff doing audio engineering. Yeah. But it just, a, for me, it was like writing, eh, just did not, didn't matter if I got a writing degree or an English degree. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear you. <laughs> you mean whenever you like book shows, you don't put that on your mind? Yeah, right. It's like, hey, um, I'm going to need these books backstage. Well, that's the ironic thing is all through college, everybody's was always fucking asking me and asking all my friends and shit in the writing program and the English program like oh that's cool what are you going to do with that what are you going to do with that and it's honestly it's like I use it every day if I think about it you know yeah. it's, like no. I, it's like but I'm using it to write songs or to read books or to 
you know, do writing on my own. And so it's kind of like, I always just had this fuck you attitude of like, well, what am I even doing here if that's the point? If it's such a, I go to school to get a job or do this, it's like, I don't know, it just was always so ironic to me in the end. It's like I use my degree every all the time because I studied books and literature and writing, which I still love. I yeah. didn't like, I didn't like go put a wrench in my bag or whatever. It's like I just love doing this shit, you know? Yeah. Whenever you went to school, was that in your like um, poetry slash spoken word phase? Like, That's what got me into doing that, yeah. Yeah. Because I went to an open mic and I like did a little bit of drama in middle school and I always just thought that I would be a writer. I always like thought I would just, I'll just write books or whatever. Yeah. That seems easy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then I went to an open mic and I listened to a bunch of weird, like I kind of got into listening to hip hop in high school. Like who? Uh, like the first, I mean, I listened to trash as a kid, you know, yeah. like I would listen to like when I was in middle school, like Eminem came out, I listened to Eminem and then I had like Nas Stillmatic albums and like a, I had that S. Doc Carter Jay-Z album that he did with like Mariah, like my middle school music was fucked, you know, yeah, that's and then understandable. in high school and as a little kid I had listened to the Beatles though, which I still feel good about, but, uh, I got at one point I had burned CDs from a friend and I had a Tribe Called Quest CD that was burned and then I had the Atmosphere Overcast EP that was a burned CD. Okay. And those were, like I started listening to that and to me those just sounded like the same kind of crazy shit. And so I got really into that and then I think I started listening to Sage Francis and then it was just like by the time I got to college I was started to experiment listening like all kinds of different shit like that. Yeah. But yeah, then I went to an open mic in my first year in college at the behind this Chinese restaurant and I was just sitting there watching people perform and I just had this feeling of like, oh fuck this, I I want to do, you know. It's like yeah. watching someone perform and you're like, I want to do that it's so bad right now. And that's kind of what led to Spoken Word was just like a holding piece until I started making music kind of. Yeah. It was like almost not a waste of time, but it was, I felt more comfortable doing that. I was like, I can't be, I can't rap. I'm not going to be a fucking rapper, you know? Yeah. And then it was like, it just became clear over time. I would start to incorporate music with spoken word, and eventually I was like, I'm making, I'm just going to start making songs. And yeah. I don't know. That's tight. Um, so how long do you think it was before you were like, so I'm just trying to get a timeline here. So you're in school for like four years you're slightly older than me. You said you started making Curta music in, what was it, like, 2011? We, 20. Yeah, we put out, well, we put, I think we put out, uh, uh, Four Digit might have to check me on this, but I think we put out our first thing in 2012. Okay, Four Digit, by the way, is the producer of Curta. Yeah. And Curta is, like, kind of you, kind of a band. It's yeah, you, yeah. but as yeah. a band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, want it to be. Yeah, he, he basically does, like, all the production but we do most of the composition a lot of it together so okay. it's like very band like but the sounds i would say like at the end of the day when it comes to the final sculpting of the sounds like i might have a say in like oh, i want to have this part cut around or like add a bass here or do something like this but when it comes to the final sculpting of the sounds like it all goes through his uh big head yeah <laughs> So yeah, he's like the main engineer of all this shit, kind of. Yeah, and you said like the first couple releases you did around that era are just like obsolete now. There's like nowhere to hear them and shit. Just, yeah, like, no one's gonna find that yeah. shit unless no they like get in touch life. with some of my old my old friends or my brother or something. Yeah. But he knows he's not allowed to share it. Uh, <laughs> I made an EP completely by myself, and I sent it to someone I met through poetry shows in Chicago, and he mastered it and did a remix and sent it back and I put that out completely by myself and then I made an album and I met Brent uh, we were both like working at a restaurant is Brent four Brent's digit. four digit yeah and I met him and he was going to school for audio engineering uh, at CU Denver and I was like well I just finished recording an album you know cuz I took a I had like taken 2 weeks of my paid vacation off of uh, my job at the grocery store and made an album and then I was like you want to help mix it and he did, and so then I started going to his house, and then like months and months later, we put out a full album, which is one of the obsolete like Kurt albums now. Yeah. But they're all kind of like mixtapey, like weird, I don't know, weird stuff back then. Yeah. 
So I know you were we were talking a lot about you kind of getting your chops playing in Denver. Yeah. But uh, like even before then, you like traveled a little bit with the spoken word shit, but mostly. Yeah, I, I came. Like, I even came to the East Coast once. Yeah, I know you said as far as Chicago, closer than that too. Yeah, we well, we, I think when we came to the East Coast, though, I don't, I don't think we had any shows out here. Oh. We were suppo- I think we maybe did a show in Maryland. I don't know, but yeah, we did shows in, up, out to Chicago from Colorado, and then one time we drove out to the East Coast and did some shows along the way. Um, but it was so sparse; those tours were were terrible. You know. Yeah. We like we'd have a show, have a show that would fall through, have three days in between. But it was more like road tripping, you know? yeah. Which was valuable to me at the time too. It was like fun. It was a good experience. Yeah. Um, so we talked about like, uh, I feel like whenever you first started playing like rap shows in Colorado or in Denver, you were just like taking all the shows and now you're kind of at the point of like seeing what's the value in that or if it's worth oh, it yeah. anymore. Well, rap shows, we didn't really start playing rap shows for a while just because oh, yeah, I, right. I didn't feel plugged in to that community. And I, most of my friends make really cool like dope experimental kind of dark electronic music Mm -hmm. and we kind of came up in that environment which i don't know why they would let curta play those shows with them or set up shows you know yeah i think it was because i was booking shows i would i had a showcase i did called the noise floor for a while and then i would set up shows and like i would put all these crazy experimental bands and then curta yeah which is i think we kind of fit in that but it was also I also always knew some people weren't fucking with it because it does sound like rap music on a level, you yeah. know. Uh, but now, yeah, now we're more, we're also kind of plugged into this sort of, I guess, indie rap or alt alt rap. Alt rap's probably not a good connotation now, <laughs> but we're now we're like more, <laughs> now we're more plugged into that shit. So it's like, we get some opening shows that are cool and do some fun stuff like that. And but yeah, I don't we don't play more than like a once a month in Denver now. I don't yeah. Think. Just because it doesn't make sense, I'd, it's more important to me to try to finish, like the album we're working on or help yeah. set up shows and work on the art before you promote it. Essentially, yeah. Which is what the shows. And if we're doing a show with friends, I want to try to make it a good show and have you know some people there so we can all have a good time and like a great experience together. And if I'm playing every week, like I don't want to just show up to a show in Denver and do a set and just be like, ugh, I just did that. Cause it's like, what the fuck, you know. Yeah, I'd rather be a part of like let's, like let's like do this show next month and we'll all kind of be together involved in it. And but that's very, that's like a whole different story. Uh, that's like a very different challenge on a local. You know. Yeah. It's like getting, getting people, people on the same page, the same even in your own city, is not always the easiest thing to do. You know? Yeah. We have amazing friends in Denver, so it's awesome. But it's also hard to like coordinate anything in the music scene. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you're touring and you play with someone and then you realize like they did like three shows that week or something and it's like, oh, well, our show might have been better if like you didn't, you know, yeah. didn't do three shows. But also everybody's got to be on their own trip in a way. It's like, I'm going to do what's best for me. So yeah. say la vie, you know? Yeah. So instead of playing locally, it seems like, is this, how many tours have you done? I've only seen you out in these parts twice. Yeah, this is the second time we've come out here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did a tour with our friend Mir Fears, and we did the Pacific Northwest, and then our friend Sastro and the Fruity Loops from Colorado Springs, we did a tour uh, of like the West Coast, Southwest, uh, San Francisco type of shit with him. Which I guess that's not... Yeah, so we did like West Coast, Southwest with him. Uh, So like four or five tours. And then I went to California last year and did just a handful of shows. And then I went to... I did some shows in France this year. Oh, wow. So like I've done like more like little ones lately. Yeah. But in terms of big like 10 plus day runs of shows, this would be the second time we've come out this way. And we did a, a four digit I myself... And we did a tour in the Midwest that was, like, pretty big. Okay. In the summer, maybe a year and a half or two years ago in the Would summer. Would he, like, play the beats live and shit or, like... Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, when we play shows in Denver, when we do shows together, it's it's all, like, a hardware setup that he has. and Yeah. Like, has sequencers and... So that's kind of how we developed 
our live show is even doing shows together. So now I've done a lot of shows on my own. Uh, in terms of this year, I've probably, because I'm doing this 15 shows and the shows I did in France and shit, now it's like balancing out where I'm getting more used to doing shit by myself. But yeah. Yeah, when I play with him, it's all hardware and he does all the beats and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I saw you had a, like a pretty gnarly setup. I mostly just saw you breaking it down because everyone was like afraid to move forward during the performances. <laughs> That's like the thing when there's like chairs that people are gonna sit. So oh yeah. It's like, yeah, the chairs are where the people go. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, what is your like live setup when you're solo? Uh, I have a I have my sampler which I've had for a long time. That just like kind of keeps me on the tracks because I can just play beats off of it. And then I have I basically have my sampler. I have a little keyboard synthesizer, like a little tiny toy drum machine, and then it all is going to a mixer and bust out through effects. Yeah. So that's why there's like so many wires and shit. Yeah. It's like, because I have a couple effects pedals. But it just, to, for me, it's a way to, I could do a very simple show with it, or I could do some like really, like I have the ability, it's scary to me to have the ability to do improvisational stuff, but there's been some shows on this tour where I'm like really thankful for it, because I get on stage and I just feel comfortable, and I just dick off for like five or six minutes. That's cool. And yeah, and sometimes that's like a unique experience that like, this yeah. is for this live show only. Yeah, and so that's that's what I've always wanted to be able to do in shows. And with Brent, when we do shows together, we add a lot of that. And so by myself, it's like a new thing, and it's really scary, but I've been trying it on this tour, and it's been so far uh, pretty rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, I awesome. like it. Um, was your... I saw you had two mics. Was that just the second one? It was just through the PA just to have like some reverb? Oh, yeah, and I have a mic going into my mixer and my effects and shit, okay. too. Okay, so yeah. you were doing that all yourself? Yeah, so yeah. Just like... No, I have a second mic that I do... Uh, yeah, I, I, rack, I <laughs> rap with two mics, and one of them is just going through my effects. Yeah, cool. Which is... It's like fun for me. It's better for my brain. Uh, I have a pedal that can mix vocals and all that shit, but it's better for my brain to be like... Effect, rap. Effect you know, yeah, yeah, rap yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So I like it that way. And I have a, you, I have a, I think I have a tricky little setup where I, I don't ever feed back that mic, and I've found ways to do it so I don't feed it back. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's made it possible, kind of. So I like, I don't know. I really like doing that. And I don't know what people think, but I've had a lot of people tell me like, that's cool. It was like fun to watch you with two mics or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. For me, it's just. I'm just trying to get a certain grimy backup vocal sound that's organic and without having to play like ad lib tracks or whatever. Yeah, you know? for it's sure. like I want to have a fuller sound. So. Yeah. But yeah, there's a mic in my setup too. Nice. Um. So how how have these shows been? Like, is it is the, like the tour experience like valuable for you? Like, are you? I don't know. Is it like? The shows. Yeah. Yes, because the touring experience, like in terms of the shows, it's extremely valuable for me, you know? Yeah. I make, I've been making a lot of headway with like these regional friends and like me meeting really cool people, doing shows with artists that I really admire. Uh, the traveling experience, I would say is like valuable like 30% of the time, you know? Like, yeah. I think that that is what would be, when you're with someone else, the travel experience is better. Yeah, like I did some, solo. I did some shows with Prem Rock the last four days and it like when I was in New York with him did he just him, jump in your car? yeah he just jumped okay. in the car and like so being in New York with him because he's from there all of a sudden it was like really cool the travel part of it because like we went and got ramen yeah. like we went and got food at this place and he knows all these cool spots in Harlem but for me the traveling experience like that's the grind you know it's yeah. like the famous you know quotes like, it's like some B.B. King quote or whatever it's like you get paid to travel not to perform you know yeah. And it's like, to me, the travel experience is not always valuable. But sometimes you end, like, I went up to Canada, and there's cool shit that happens, you know, where yeah. you're like, oh, this is, it's food, though, really, if you think about it, you know? Yeah. Like, a lot of it just becomes condensed to these exciting meals you have. And that's what I find I'm, like, texting people about. It's like, check out this bowl of fucking ramen, or, like, look at this sandwich, you yeah. know? Or, like, I'm eating falafel at three in the morning. Which, so it's <laughs> like... What I, are you doing with your life? Yeah, exactly. So I wouldn't say that that's valuable at all, but the shows and being able to perform uh, every night is extremely, extremely valuable. Yeah. That's like my, I mean, that's the only reason that I would do it, you know. Yeah. I love to travel, uh, 
I would I like really like to travel, but this does not feel the same as traveling. No, I mean, it's like you're on like a tight schedule and you have somewhere to like be you're by yourself. You're just like tunnel vision on the mm-hmm. road. You have a job to do. Yeah. And it's an insanely stupid job. It's like you have to, <laughs> and you have to get excited to, you know. I I think the I would say for people that think like that romanticize touring in a way that I used to, it is amazing. And if you really love to perform and you really love your music and you feel that it's something you want to put out there, then fucking yeah, touring's awesome. Mm-hmm. But you also, there's like a work aspect to it that can, I think, come up and make a lot of people be in shitty moods on tours and stuff. Yeah. For, sure. for me, I'm, I love it, so it's fun. But I, I also just write off the traveling experience. Like, yeah. There's been a lot of days on this tour where I wake up, go get like a green juice or a coffee, and then I just eat peanut butter and jelly and just drive to the next city wait around read a book maybe and yeah. then just go into a venue and it's like the whole experience of that day was just being in this venue and if that feels like a waste of time then you're fucked you know yeah but for me that's like my that's, what that's my place yeah. yeah that's why you're there yeah so yeah that. um i know i've tried to like make a better habit of like i'll like have my skateboard or I th- like recently i throw my bike rack on my car I like to take my fucking bike. Yeah, that's and then, cool. Like it's just a way cooler way to like experience the city. So when the show completely flops, I'm like, well, at least I like saw yeah. this. Yeah, you get to ride your bike around. And yeah, and I feel like exercise is kind of important too when you're just sitting in a car mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's hard to do. I know you said you would like announce dates, and all these like little trolls would just pop up on the internet. People are weird on the like, internet. Yeah. Let me let me get on them. Yeah, sometimes you get hit up by random people. I, yeah, it's like, strange. You were saying, how did you, like, break it to them that, like, hey, this isn't worth it, you know, for you? For oh, them. like touring with Curta? Yeah. Uh, well, I've had a few people hit me up since we posted the dates, and they were like, yo, can I jump on that tour? And I was just like, it's not, it's not like, that type of tour, you know? Yeah, it's not. It's like, I'm going out there to try to forge these connections and, like, do these shows, and we've spent months setting up these shows and mm-hmm. shit and like connecting with cool locals it's not like the type of tour you just hop on and you're in front of like a dope crowd every night and it's like there's not enough to go around basically yeah know, on like a Curta tour yeah right now I'm trying to think what do you do what do you do besides rap like uh right now I'm like working as a stagehand oh yeah that's right so I like go set up concerts or like conferences and it's just like kind of it's almost like kind of uh non-committal temp work yeah so so far it's been good before that i worked in a publishing house for five years um they published like theater materials and stuff okay and that was cool i got to do a little bit of editing and a lot of just like printing books and yeah shipping books and that was a cool job but that would seem like a real jobby job you'd be like tied down with though right yeah it got to the point where i was starting to tour more and more and I wanted to pursue this more than I wanted to, like, be situated really well with a yeah. job that was there. And I lived 30 minutes from that job, which was too far for me, too. Yeah. Because the commute was starting to kick my ass. And there was days where I was, like, falling asleep on the way home on the highway and shit yeah, like that. And it's like, yeah. I just don't... My thing is I don't give a fuck. Um, so it's like, I'm going to go out to a show, and if if I'm having a good time, and if I can, like, hang out with some artists that I like... Like, I'm not, it's not even on, like, getting drunk. I don't even really get drunk. Yeah. But it's, like, I'll hang out till 2 in the morning and have a conversation with someone that's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And then I have to be at work at 7, and it's just stupid, you know? So yeah. eventually I was, like, just, I'm, like, in the middle of, I mean, we'll see what I'm saying in a couple months. But right now it's, Why? like. What do you mean? Well, just because I quit my job, like, two or three months ago. Oh, and you still got, like, maybe a nest egg left. Yeah, yeah. Me. So it's like, we'll see what the fuck happens. Easier you know? to talk shit. When yeah, it's easier to rent. talk shit right now. But I'm like, I don't know. I just don't think I'm going to... You, I don't think you get anywhere without going all in on stuff, you know? Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. You can't just, like, you know, work your way around the cusp forever and expect a breakthrough. But I also have a very existential view of reality and life where like I spend a good portion of my days really feeling sort of the strange brevity unreality of this experience you know so for me it's like I don't like I'm not always steeped in reality in the sense of like this is what I need to do 
I need to have a job. I need to do this. I need to do this. Like a lot of times I'm, I spend a lot of my day just like, what the fuck is this? Like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, where, yeah. where the hell are we? Like, why are we like, what the fuck is a human or, you know, really existential shit. So yeah. for me, it's not as hard to make the leap to okay. like, fuck a job. Like I don't, I'm going to yeah. be dead. Like, what is that? You know, I spend a lot of time thinking about that stuff. And I think a lot of our culture and consumerism and capitalism is geared towards thinking about things that I don't think should necessarily matter to the human experience, you know? I think it's like a big distraction. Yeah. So it's like, it's easy for me to make these leaps and be like, I'm going to go do this. Or like, it's more important that I, it's like, I'm getting, I get frustrated sometimes if I don't spend enough time reading or writing or working on art. And that is stupid as fuck to somebody that is like a hard-working person with principles or yeah just someone that just wants to have a good life like that's yeah, such a stupid concern because right. for them it's like uh what do you do like why do you give a shit about that like just yeah. worry about putting food in your mouth or something you know but for me i just come at stuff from such a weird no that's awesome angle you I know i think that's a weird angle that's a cool angle and i wish more people felt like that because it's like so many fools i see it's like what do you what do you do oh i work this job it's like no like what do you like what's fulfilling for you yeah like, i was talking don't have that i was talking to my friend about uh we were talking about some artist and they're saying like well you know it gets depressing to just be doing like a dead-end tour where you have to you know you have to like take some promoter to get a guarantee from the atm like how does this how does this artist like do that without being bummed out and my friend my friend was saying uh, and it wasn't me that was saying that, but my friend was saying like, well, because it's either that or like, he'll probably fucking kill himself. Right. You know, like, cause the hard thing to explain for some people is you don't, you don't wake up in the morning and decide like, I'm going to be an artist today. It's like, I'm, it's almost a fucking disability or something. You know, it's like, I really, yeah. I really can't <laughs> think about life in any other way. I'm just always digesting experiences and trying to output like this art excrement, you know, yeah, and that's, that's like, like my mode of operandi. So for me, when people are like, well, it's like this other point of view. It's like, I don't know if you understand that like, I'm a little bit crazy and this is like my medication basically. Yeah. That's like the easiest way for me to explain it is if I don't get on stage and act like an asshole, I might, that might start, I might start acting like an asshole. You know what right. I mean? It's like, cause I'm a very manic depressive personality and I just get it out that yeah. way. You know what okay. I mean? It's like, let the monkey masturbate, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's my new favorite saying. I'm going to misuse it all the time, too. That's, that's all, it's a good it's one like, to do. Uh, what are you eating for dinner tonight? I don't know, man. <laughs> Let the monkey masturbate, yeah. though, you know what I mean? I'm going to find something. Uh, yeah, that's, like, a great point, though. Like, Yeah, I can't explain it to people. But... An artist to be like, oh, well, the tour's not working out. They're, they'll get a job. It's like, no, they have, like... They're fuck. They're a fucked up person. You yeah, know? They, and in your in your perception of reality, right. like they are an aberration because they're they don't care about things that they probably should care about. You know. Yeah. And for me, being an artist has put me like outside of this paradigm of thinking, which would be considered like the smart moves to make. Yeah. But also, I do realize that that's pri like a very privileged point of view to have, and it's a very uh, like luxurious thought. Mm -hmm. You know. And in my experience working and doing art, uh, it does get mixed up because it's like, well, this was the most fun part of my day was I created this thing, you know, mm -hmm. but that obsession has grown so deep for me that it's not even like that anymore. It's just like, it's not like a shit job and a fun art. It's just art is in my brain all the time. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just slowly teetering towards the cliff or whatever. You know? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, you have the one track. I didn't go to work today, but I went to work anyway or whatever. Is that the hook? Yeah, that yeah. Like? Well, I think a lot of people think that that song is about like hustling or something. Oh. But the reason that song is called Capping Day is because of these sci-fi books I read as a kid, like the Tripod Trilogy. Yeah. And I, I always used to ask before I performed that song when we were on tour, I was like, has anyone read the Tripod Trilogy? I've had like one or two people say yeah, they've read it. Yeah, then you just don't do it Which now. is crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't ask anyone. But it's crazy to me because for my brothers and I, like we always are referencing the tripods and shit, you know? And okay. the tripods took over the... I don't know why we're into this. All right, whatever. It is relevant. But the tripods took over the world. 
and they have a capping day. So like when you turn 13, you get your cap and then you go out and have this ceremony in your community and everyone has these caps on their head, like fixed on their scalp. And it basically like when you get that cap, it's like your brain is matured enough for them to install this implant. And then you're kind of like one of the, you're like an adult is like the theme, but it's also like the robots are controlling all the humans. You're like their slaves. So these kids escape before their capping day or whatever so they can keep their brains free and then they end up destroying the tripods it's like it's a really good story honestly (laughs) it's a fun fucking sci-fi book but that song people think it's about hustling or something which just makes sense to the chorus is like i didn't go to work today i went to work anyway the people think it's about like hustling on your art or something but really the thing about that song and the whole clickbait project is it's about this concept of like you don't think you're working but you're clicking on all these advertisements and people are taking all this data oh. from you. And that's like the capping day idea is like, yeah. in my opinion, that in a way is a form of the same thing. It's like thin spooled copper wires coiled on my brain stem. Mm-hmm. It's like that like is a reference to that tripod book, but it's also like a metaphor for what I think reality is becoming with consumerism and people working for free. And, yeah. and like, it's like the Roomba, the Roomba company, the guy came out and he said, the, oh, these Roombas have been gathering data, like mapping everybody's apartments for the last like five years. And I'm going to sell that data to the biggest company that will buy it. Okay. And it's like, no one knew that that, like all these big companies are realizing data is valuable. So they're just gathering data on you, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like Facebook is probably the most egregious. Like if you start doing Amazon search and then tab over to Facebook, you, you know, yeah, you see you're like, you're like, what the fuck? Like, like- why are they selling me a sex doll here? I was just looking at sex dolls or whatever, you know? <laughs> and it's like, that that's what that song is about, kind yeah. of. But if it has a double meaning, that's fine, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said earlier that, like, performing is, like, your way to, like, kind of exercise your manic depress and, like, get that out. Is that, like, is that legit? Like, if you don't perform, you just, like, feel absolutely crazy? Uh, I just know that when I perform, I feel like much better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm like a pretty loud, I don't know, I'm like a boisterously loud person sometimes. And then sometimes I'm not. Okay. So like that's, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is I'm super mellow and then I go on stage and I'm not mellow at all. But like in my life with people I'm comfortable with, like we, I'm silly and shit, you know? Yeah. But then I'm not always like that. So for me, it's like kind of, there's not like a middle area, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like. Uh, but I don't know if I would, like if I didn't perform. If I, I'm not like I wouldn't like go crazy. I would just be, I wouldn't have my. I wouldn't be doing my favorite thing. Yeah. It's like how people talk about skating or like biking or like rock climbing yeah. or something or like certain this sports. Is how you get you, like, yeah, it's like, your, like. Yeah, it's like my thing. Yeah, it's like my kick. So it's like I. And that's the thing about luxurious. Uh, goals in life and stuff. It's like I want to do the thing that makes me feel the best. Mm-hmm. And that is I think at the root of explaining being an artist to people that's fucked for me is I'm like, I want to do this because it feels the best. And most people's experience in life, like they forget, they let that go. They were disillusioned by that like a long time ago, you know, like most people when they're 19, they're like, Oh, I got to just fucking bite down on this leather thing and get, (laughs) get it in the ass or whatever. You know what I mean? (laughs) But for me, I just have this stupid, I'm just stupid. I tell people, Going on tours and doing music in the way that I do it in my pursuit, it's like equal parts bravery and stupidity, you know? Yeah. And it's like, so I don't, I don't take offense to anything in that regard. So it's like, yeah, I want to do what makes me feel best. Like, I'm an idiot, you know? Like, I should just be putting canned beets in a cupboard or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, I should just be preparing bags of rice or whatever the fuck, you know? It was mm-hmm. saving money, really. But it's like... Yeah, I just want to do what feels the best for me. Yeah. And that's amazing that you still feel that way and you're not 19 because like... Yeah. Well, and that's why I still do it. It's like... Yeah. I'm like the first person to say like if this all starts to feel like shit, then fuck it, you know? Yeah. I'm like doing it because it's valuable. And when I was a kid, music was valuable to me in like a very identity crisis time in my life, you know? Yeah. It's like you... You get those albums that are you important. Found that Eminem song. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it just, just relates to me. Lose yourself, dude. Um, did you see his fucking Trump rap no, or whatever? No, I'm trying not to. Oh, it's insane, man. I heard this. I just I heard don't. It's pretty good. <laughs> I just don't think it's. I don't think it's any different than him rapping about trendy shit in the news. It's like he's just taking 
the most like everything everybody's com- he's just taking a bunch of headlines and like jamming them into a rap you yeah know? so it's like not a real critique of trump or it's not even like a good diss it's like yeah it's he's just talking about shit that's trendy right now yeah. that's like what my takeaway from it was which yeah. is not what's fun about rap music it's like give me some point of view or some yeah your perspective yeah it's just stupid as fuck yeah yeah i like tried to not even read people's comments about it but like everywhere i looked for like a week it was just like all over I'm like, get this oh yeah it's crazy me. i don't want to hear it i don't care the, well, if anybody has seen it, they should watch the, I think it's Andy Melanakis did like a voiceover of the video where he does like Eminem's raps and that shit's really funny. Yeah. And that's what, that's what people should watch because I watched that. Premrock showed me that and I was like, oh, this is hilarious. I'm into that. So I'm trying to think, where do we, where do we go from Andy Melanakis? <laughs> Berries are good. Hey, it's good. funny, man, how you were saying like, no, now you're realizing that like the exciting thing is like, look what I'm eating. Yeah. Whenever I used to tour, I would just take like cold soup, and I'd be like in the car, like eating like cold <laughs> soup, and then I'd get to like a venue, and someone would be like, "Yeah, man, you eat anything crazy on tour?" I'm all like, "No." Yeah. Well, that's no, I've been doing no. a lot of PB and J this tour. Yeah. Because it just gets you, you know, up until the show, you don't need that much food really, and yeah. then you can go get some cool late night food afterwards or something. But yeah, there's been less exciting food. That's the one thing about traveling by myself is it's it's not as much. Uh, energy or there's not this mood of like what do you want to get okay let's get this is this cool with you this is cool with me is it cool with you it's like oh fuck yeah that looks really good or whatever mm-hmm. it's like you just wake up and it's like i gotta go here i gotta do this yeah i gotta yeah. shovel some nutrients in my crackle. yeah it's like i just gotta eat yeah and I, it's like who wants to go to a nice restaurant by themselves anyways or whatever yeah you know it's like fuck that some bravery it's not me yeah <laughs> i can take myself out to a dinner and a movie but no thanks um so yeah, I don't, I don't really know where else we can go from here. Like, what do you have? So you're like forging these connections, like touring, trying to make people meet people, um, and then just do it again. Hopefully, do it to a bigger scale. Like, what's yeah? What's I think the, for us, it'll make sense to tour next time, like with another act. You yeah, know? I think that's what, uh, like, I'll try to set up in the future is. Just to continue broadening those circles and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, the most important thing to me is making music that I'm proud of and, okay. and pushing that out into the world. So when I go home from tour, I'll work on music again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll finish projects that we have underway or projects that I'm starting now and all that shit, you know. And then, you know, the, the campaign trail will blaze again. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying, I think last night you told me... Uh, <clears throat> you like starting to work on a Curta project or potentially the Curta project that's produced by you instead of four digit. Cause like, well, we know we, we like have a project together that's almost done. Okay. But then I've always been making beats and shit on my own, like just shitty demo beats and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's been happening for a long time now. So I've got all these, uh, I've got all these beats like, and that I've started to write to and shit. Because I've kind of written to the beats that he's allowed me to have at this point. And so now I'm like in this lag period where him and I are finishing a project together where we have to finish mixing it and doing all the production. But on my free time, I've been kind of writing to my own beats. And so it's like, I don't know for sure what's going to happen with those because there's a, you know, there's a good chance that I'll give them to him or yeah. whatever, you know. But I've been giving some to my friend in France and he's been like adding some instrumentation and shit. Oh and yeah, you said that. Yeah, it's been fun just like I have a lot of energy for writing music right now. And so I've just been when I have the energy to do shit, I just try to do as much as I can. And it's like yeah. I don't Fortage and I have a project that we're not done with right now that we need to finish whenever we're together, we like work on that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not trying to stack a bunch of things in the hopper that are going to it's like I'd rather just push it to other places and kind of see what happens. Yeah. But he who knows, I mean that's the thing is like who knows maybe yeah. I'll end up giving all that shit to him and he'll end up making it better you guys work on music in person yeah we work together. on a lot of shit in person but he yeah. said he's, he's about to move yeah yeah, yeah. but we'll st- I mean he's my best friend basically uh, basically <laughs> he's my, don't, my don't basic yeah. here. he's my basic best friend yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah so we'll, I think that we'll always work on music together yeah you know? I, at least that's the way I see the future is we'll always work on music together but 
I mean, I'm always making shit, and it's, I mean, literally, I've been making beats for a long time, and they're really shitty, but it's been so long now that I have some that I really like, mm -hmm. and so it just made sense in the last few months. I was like, I'm just going to write to some of these and just kind of see what happens. Yeah. So I don't have any plans. I'm, like, big on not planning shit too far ahead of time now. I yeah. used to do that a lot to a detriment, and it was almost like a, it's a shitty way to think, is, like, I don't like to think, like, I want to put out an album that's dope like a dope dancey album it's like for me it's become more valuable as an artist to really focus on the music when i'm making it and let it sort of speak to me mm -hmm. and then when it's done i want to look at it and then do all the other shit that is not like peer like all the dirty parts you know mm -hmm. then i'll like touch it with my fingers so to speak and like mold it into oh, this is an album, and this is what we can, this is how we can put it out, and this is how we can pitch okay. it to people. So you don't, like, I know last night we were talking about, like, how far ahead you kind of have to live as an artist sometimes, or as a performer. Right? Yeah. And just, like, I'm going to be in these cities, these dates, I got to, like, have my, this release done, do my press then. Yeah. But you're, you don't want I still think that, like that, but... Just not with the creative process. But with the creative process, I'm trying to, like, that stuff has become a lot more serious in the last, like, year or two. Okay. Where there's, like... I think there's not not like more pressure but more opportunities maybe uh and working with labels on our last release was super cool and i had to have stuff to them early and do all this stuff and i'm gonna do that going forward but yeah the creative process i just have to i can't like think about that when i'm making music yeah so that's why i would never be like oh i'm making a solo album right now if i've made a solo album then i'll then, you know. then i'll know you know yeah. when i'm like done with it and Forged and I definitely have, we have some new shit that's almost done that I think is the best music we've ever made. And that's like at a point where I could, I can like sort of start to conceptualize it a little bit, but it's not quite done yet. Yeah. So yeah, that's like my thinking is if, if I truly am doing this stuff because I'm just sort of a madman and I love doing it so much, I can't stop. I'm like obsessed with it. Then I have to honor that like in the process in ways that I didn't do it before, you know? Yeah. And I think that's making my music and my writing and stuff better to like, you know, it's like the idea of, it's so much harder nowadays to close the door and get work done because we have our fucking phones and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've just realized that lately, uh, that I just, that's like my main focus now is cutting off everything and just doing the best writing I can do and pushing that shit out. Ooh. And I'll be a whore, I'll do the marketing, and I'll go crazy on that stuff, you know? But I want to, yeah. like... I've always precedented my projects with that thinking. Like, it used... Like I was saying last night, it used to be when I was a kid, like, I gotta have a piece of writing for this open mic. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, I gotta have, like, a chat book to go on this tour. And then it was like, I gotta have an album to be a band. I gotta have a better album to book better shows. Yeah. And then I got to have like this label to get on like a tour. And now my thing that's gone so far along that I'm like, I realize the importance of it, but also I want to like keep my shit pure now. Like, yeah. cut, but not and it's like you said, it's like I have these, uh, lathe cuts. Yeah. Lathe yeah. Cuts and tapes and it's done and it's ready for the tour. And yeah. Not, like making something for the, like, yeah. Like I, 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 I want to be prepared and do things in like a professional fashion yeah but yeah when it comes to making the art i just gotta focus on it and i just don't talk i don't talk about shit anymore as, as much as i used to before it's like it exists or whatever yeah i don't know what you mean it's like annoying someone's like i don't know this rarely happens but you see someone like put like two bars in their like facebook it's like yeah dog just wrote that Going oh to the yeah studio today yeah so like all right I'll hear it in six months. Yeah. Like, and I think that's, I think for some people, like if that's valuable, I know sometimes it feels good to just put a song out and like yeah. get feedback and stuff. And like I said, I usually just go to open mics and just do new shit every week or whatever. But it, it's just a different, like I have different uh, goals now than I had when I was just like fucking off all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. And now there's more people involved in setting up shows and doing all this stuff that I don't want to just like not represent myself uh, in like a quality way or something, you know? Yeah. So it's just like more challenging. Cool, man.
Um, I don't know. I feel like we could pretty much leave it there. Do you have anything you want to close on? I'll let your boy. Uh, yeah, no. I think that's good. Yeah, curtamusic.com, Curta Music, social networks everywhere like that. Okay. What is Curta? Uh, just like... It was originally just like I, when I started this project, I was like, this was a cool band name. Yeah. Um, but a Curta is a mechanical German calculator that I can't remember the guy's name who created it, but he got thrown in a concentration camp. Um, and then he was in like the scientific concentration camp. So he was like making one for to, to, to present to the Fuhrer. And then the war ended. Obviously, the Fuhrer shot himself in the face. And then he got out of the concentration camp and he spent the rest of his life in a patent court, not being able to get the rights to this amazing mechanical calculator which could do square roots and multiplication and division. Shit. And he invented this like drum technology where you spin a drum and it kicks out the answer to this equation. But then electric calculators came and made it obsolete. So it's like, instrument. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a really interesting story for people to read about and shit. It doesn't pertain to my music in any way except for that I love the idea of like just the tragedy of it and the mm -hmm. tech I really like technology and shit like that so it's like really fascinating in that way cool but yeah Kurt is just a rapper from Denver <laughs> alright cool man yeah thanks for doing this for sure. yeah of course thank you man With my sentence, I'm afraid I'll get checked off and labeled as pretentious. But does that mean I should brag and claim I am extensive just to water down poetic techniques of acting pensive? They say to diss a fan base to its face is to blame a whole city when you can't escape a state. How a cow's hooves make it not climb a cattle grate. You scream at the internet like, why can't I catch a break? <laughs> Well, I've got a lot less to say today, so here's a two-go portion of a rap cliche. You could stand, you could stare, you could sway. Odds are you were working for zero pay is clickbait. Anyway, I didn't go to work today. I went to work anyway. Hey, I didn't go to work today. I went to work anyway, clickbait and zero. I didn't 